referee Joey Curtis. And now boxing fans, introducing the principals. First in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He tipped in at an even 218 pounds. This gentleman has a record of 31 wins, five losses with 24 knockouts. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome James Fighting Cowboy Tillis. Tillis. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the burgundy trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at 208 and one half pounds. This young man has a record of 13 wins, only one loss with eight knockouts. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, boxing fans, here is Marvis Frazier. Frazier. And the referee, Joey Curtis, about to run down the instructions. Marvis with his dad, the former world champion, Joe Frazier. And it is Bundini Brown, a familiar face out of the days of the Muhammad Ali camp with the arm around James Tillis, who used to be known as Quick Tillis. He now refers to himself, as you heard, as the Fighting Cowboy. Could that be a uh, contraction, the uh, Quick Cowboy? <laughs> this is scheduled for 10. Marvis Frazier, as you saw on the tail of the tape, listed at 6-2. That is the height of James Tillis, but Frazier closer to perhaps a shade over a six foot. And his weight, 208, he's beginning to grow into that heavyweight mold. His legs are certainly like his father's were at that stage. Tree trunks. And you can see the uh, height advantage that Tillis does have over Frazier. You can check the lower right hand of the uh, screen. And you are seeing the running time. In effect, we are now 25 seconds in to round one. Tillis, when he feels he's in control, has a masterful, hey, quick hey, job, hey, jab. Hey, You're going to be hearing the voice of Drew Bundini Brown, who's never been known for keeping quiet in the corner. Corner that uh, you shared with uh, Brown upon occasion of the days of Muhammad Ali. I had a punctured eardrum from standing <laughs> on the right side of him most of the time. And a battered Go back. The when the elevator comes down. All right, that is uh, Bundini. Go to the basement when the elevator comes down. That means I hear much that to the head yes. when, the, when the guard is down. He also characterized this bout as from the root to the fruit. We beat the root, Joe Fraser. Now we're going to beat the fruit, Marvis Fraser. Colorful man. He's the poet of the street. Coming up on the halfway mark of round number one, Marvis Fraser. 13 and 1, 8 by knockout. Frazier's biggest win, a 10 round decision over James Broad, the man who knocked out Marvis in the 1980 Olympic trials. And Marvis also shows a victory over Joe Buckner. Yes, the same Joe Buckner who lost to Marvis's dad 10 years earlier. It was a different Joe Buckner, however. It was the same body, but a different person inside that body. Joe Buckner in his prime was a pretty good fighter. Extended Joe Fraser, Jimmy Ellis, Muhammad Ali. But here, it's that kind of first round where Quick Tillis is having his way. Marvis very patiently waiting for an opening that thus far has not materialized. Good left hook by Tillis. And now Fraser able to back Tillis up. Tillis' biggest fight lost that 15 round. Decision to Mike Weaver in a 1981 WBA title fight in Chicago. He was also stopped by champions to be Pink Lon Thomas and Greg Page in 82. Do that Sugar Ray Robinson on it. Do that Sugar Ray on it. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. Do that Sugar Ray Robinson on it. And we're now final seconds, first round. We'll be back right after these messages. 24-year-old Marvis Fraser out of Philadelphia in the Maroon coming out and is met by the hook of James Tillis. 
Freddie, you mentioned at the start that Tillis has much confidence coming into uh, tonight's bout. But here is Frazier after the good first round by Tillis, able to back Tillis up. Yeah, he had it all his way. He does have a lot of confidence. And uh, he showed it in the first round. He won that first round easily. But you got the impression Marvis was just waiting away. As he got back in the corner, the father said, Joe Frazier said, that's the way we want it. Now a little bit more pressure this round. Get away from it. Curtis spending a lot of time warning Get Tillis. Get down between his elbows. Between his elbows. Put him under. Between his elbows. He's ready now. We are one minute in. Round two. Later on, Larry Holmes defending his heavyweight championship against Carl the Truth Williams. Since Frazier was knocked out by Holmes back in November of 83, he has won twice by decision over Bernard Benton. And his last fight, a unanimous decision over Funzo Banjo. That's a name you may want to roll on your lips. Or is it Banjo Funzo? Either way, I want him in my next movie. Right now, Tillis has been doing more of the same than he did in the first round. Excellent combination, and Tillis has Frazier hurt. Frazier is hurt. Frazier is going down. Curtis checking it out. And Curtis calling for the standing eight. The standing eight in effect. Under a minute left, as you can see in the second round. And here's Tennis looking to finish Frazier off. Frazier's got to do a little bit of fighting, or Curtis nice must stop this nice fight. That standing nice eight count has just given Frazier new life, although Frazier's still in bad shape, has no Let's legs under him, and an awful out. long time to go to the bell. Let's get out. That's the danger of the standing eight count on the verge of being stopped has given him new life. Now Fraser fighting back. Coming up on 10 seconds left in the round. We're going to stay right here at the completion of the round and go to the corner of Marvis Frazier who took a standing eight. A big round for the fighting cowboy out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, James Tillis. You want me to fight his mother? Let me fight him, man. Hey, don't scare me like that. Boy. Yo. Yeah. Hey, man, you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, Bob. You sure? Yes. Yeah, that will be sure now. Yes, sir. Get head down. Look at the mother's head coming up. Get close to him. You got to get close to him, Bob. Don't fuck so up. Whoever Don't. invented the standing eight count, Joe Frazier should send him a big package this Christmas because that saved Marvis Frazier from a knockout. Without the standing eight count, I personally thought Curtis was stepping in to stop the bout. No legs, and we can see how he is being pummeled on the replay. One punch after the other, reining in. And this fight, in contrast to the uh, Larry Holmes Carl Williams championship fight later on. There is a mandatory eight and a standing eight. The three knockdown rule is in effect, and the bell does not save the fighter except in the final round. Scoring on the 10-point must system handled by the three judges. Referee Curtis does not score. Marcus Frazier uh, showing some enthusiasm as he opens up against Tillis. Well, he's recovered now. He's a young man, strong. He's got a lot of Frazier genes in him, which means you can take a big pounding and keep coming back. Had there been a standing eight count with a Larry Holmes fight, he would have survived into the next round. But um, big, big favor played to the Joe Frazier family, Marvis Frazier in particular, with a standing eight count. Very discouraging for Quick Tillis, who was on the verge of a big knockout. But you see the difference in Quick Tillis when he has confidence. He is just in command. He's chasing you. He's throwing hard punches. Tillis with a record of 31 and 5, 24 by knockout. He comes off a 10-round decision. In December, last October, he lost by decision to Carl the Truth Williams, although he knocked Williams down twice in the first round. 
every three, four, and five pounds. Fraser's starting to try to put some hurt on him so that uh, at least Tillis won't attack with that ferocity he did in the first two rounds. And Tillis, by mistake, is standing still just looking at him, although he just landed a good right-hand shot on Marvis Fraser. Shuck it off and coming back. I do want to point out we do not have an NBC microphone on Houdini Brown. That is the voice you are hearing from the corner of Tillis. He is located to our left and is very vocal. Try standing next to that for 15 years and see what it does to you. It's no question, a man like Boudini can spur a lazy fighter like Tillis to fight. He just keeps you going, he gets your blood hot. He's in, invaluable in a corner as a cheerleader. There's no nobody like him. Did Ali, pay, did Ali pay any attention to him? Paid him a lot of money. Oh, here's Frazier landing with the right hand. And Tillis ties him up. As an answer to your question, seriously, he was a big, big part of the Alley Circus. It was part of the mystique, part of what Alley loved to do. Yes, he was a big part of the Alley Circus. Nice uppercut by Tillis. Marvis Frazier has that low driving stance. And opponents try to catch him with uppercuts. We saw Tillis succeed earlier. And Frazier with a very strong third round and getting brave here in the third. And that is it. That's the end of round three. Right back in the dressing room. Holmes very upset, though, about some of the remarks made by opponents like Carl the Truth Williams, a subject we discussed with him earlier. But these fighters today, they think that they have to put a, a great fighter, a great champion down to be able to build their own confidence. You build your own confidence by your hard work, your motivation, your dedication. These guys do not have to come out and say Holmes is old, he's shot, he finished, his legs are gone. Because if, if that was so and they won, all they're doing is discrediting themselves if they become champion. Larry Holmes chasing that 49-0 record of Rocky Marciano. For Larry, it has been a run of seven years as undefeated heavyweight champion, the longest uninterrupted reign since Joe Lewis, who had a run of 12 consecutive years. Oh. And Frazier landing with that short left to greet Tillis as we open up in this fourth round. A sizzling hook. Deter determination etched on the face of Marvis Frazier. He's got the same look his father used to have when he get out of the corner. He looks like a tiger, wants to eat somebody up. Giving ground to the bigger uh, Tillis, though. Tillis lost some of the spark and a great deal of the advantage he built up in the first two rounds, which is his history. He starts out great and then just kind of loses interest in the bout. But I gave him a big 10-8 round in the second, and therefore we are at an advantage to um, Quick Tillis of 29-27. Stiff left hand by Tillis, who is tied up by Frazier. A minute in, round four, and you'll notice we are keeping the clock in the picture. And that is running time. That is time as the round continues. Oh, no. Now you're doing it, baby. Do that red child on it. Bonini summoning forth all those code words. Ray Charles, Sugar Ray Robinson, the elevator. Has so many code words, I wonder if Tillis understands any of it. It's just kind of nodding from time to time. Doesn't want to hurt uh, Boudini Brown's feelings. Listen, he's got to face Boudini when he goes back in the corner. In the meantime, Frazier put together a nifty combination of three or four punches. Tillis going to sleep again. Another three good punches by Marvis. Slowly creeping back into this fight is Marvis Frazier, having gotten a uh, reprieve from the standing eight count. Hey! Get out of there. Hold it. Stop Our referee, Joey Curtis, taking charge, telling Tillis to stop the holding, along with Dick Enberg and the fight doctor, Freddie Pacheco, Marv Albert, from Reno, Nevada. 
as Marvis leans over in the typical Fraser manner. Tillis has been able to land some beautiful uppercuts. Good hard action by both men, but Marvis Frazier getting the advantage of that exchange. And suddenly Bundini Brown in the uh, corner of James Tillis. Well, at least for just a couple of seconds, he did quiet down. Bundini again, you've got the firepower. Fire your guns, but so far only blanks this round from Quick Tillis. Load up your faces and then go home. This fight is scheduled for 10. Coming up to the end of the fourth round. Come on, cowboy. What you waiting on, cowboy? No, Nevada. Marvis Frazier, who at one point said he was not interested in a professional boxing career, then he changed his mind. He turned pro in September of 1980, opening with a third round knockout after he was staggered in that uh, debut in the first round. Cowboy. One point, Marvis was sidelined for 17 months Keep with uh, hepatitis and a pinched nerve. Looking to make up. it back from the disappointment of that first round knockout and the embarrassment of the first round KO Keep by Larry right. Holmes back in 83. Too much pride in that family. Too much pride in the phrases to let something like that affect him. He's back here. He's fighting hard. I don't know whether Marvis Frazier will ever have the size to be truly a, a, a threat to a heavyweight champion, but certainly he gives it his all once he's in there. This round began with both men exchanging very hard hooks. And now all of a sudden, as the tide changes... Oh, he hurt Tillis! All of a sudden, as the tide changes, you see Marvis dictating the action the last two rounds, and Tillis going back to his usual retreating style. As his confidence ebbs, his speed increases backwards. What about the Tillis the Tell us opening up very strong the first couple of rounds. And a decisive second round. Frazier forced to take the uh, standing eight. And now Frazier, the man who is carrying this fight. Carrying the fight, and uh, you have the feeling that if Tillis would quit going back and stand and fight, he could get Marvis Frazier in trouble. Marvis does not have the strongest chin in the world. He's got a load of guts, but he doesn't have a big, strong chin. You got to stay free, boy. You got to stay free, cowboy. Under a minute left. Cowboy, put him together. In this fifth round. Good patented left hooks to the side by Marvis. That's where the money was for Joe Frazier. That's where the money is for Marvis Frazier in this fight. Let's get out. Nice combination by Tillis, and Frazier able to counter. Just when you think Tillis could fire away and turn the tide, he starts to run again. And Marvis, not one to let opportunity go by, follows him in with thudding hooks to the body and head. There have been precious few jabs in this bout. It is Marvis Frazier as the aggressor. All right, good. All right, that is. I want you to be there. You can't make love to Dallas and Peter. You understand? You gotta be there. And what's the day? If you wait two hours, get up too many morning. Get that spirit in you. You ain't no ordinary man, don't fight like one. I tell it fast, get mad. Get a little closer. Get a little closer. Look out for Alright. Shake him a little bit. Alright. Let it go. Yes. Six rounds. A contrast in style in the corners of Marvis Frazier and James Tillis. Marvis saying, how am I doing, Pop? Pop says, you're doing fine. And in the other corner, Boudin saying, 
Be a man. You work too hard. You're not an ordinary man. And of course, on my card, unofficially, because of the 10-8 round, I have it a totally even fight now. Marvis being able to take the last three rounds in a row as the cowboy got on his horse and rode into the distance. Marvis Frazier in hot pursuit. There you go. Three or four or five punches and nothing in return from Tillis. <laughs> but then he just said he spit on you. Hit him hard. <laughs> But then he will resort to anything. Look at that. Marvin's just, Marvin's just chasing him around the ring. And no return from Tillis. Powerful combination by Tillis. Let's get out. Yes, when he, when he squares away, when he sets his feet and he's not in the stirrups, he can punch, but he won't do it enough. He's so busy running back that he won't set himself and let the punches fly. In the meantime, there's this little Marvis Frazier like a bulldog right on him. And it's Frazier continuing to stalk Tillis. Good luck to him by Tillis. Perfect hook by Tillis. Let's get out of there. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. No hit on the break. That's it. Let's get out of there. Come on. Let's Tillis continues to have success when he goes to the uppercut. Joey Curtis breaking the fighters cleanly, as you should. Doing a good job here. Going to be highly criticized for that standing eight, but that's the rule in the box. Double up. Under a minute left. In this sixth round, scheduled for ten. That's what I'm talking about. Punch in there. You got a hand free. Cowboy, what are you waiting on? You got a hand free. Right there, Cowboy. Going to run now, Cowboy. Oh, Tillis. Big right hand by Tillis. Frazier right back. And Frazier's got one defect is he's got too much Frazier blood in him. And when he gets nailed, he tries to fight back, sometimes causing disastrous results, as we saw in that second round. But he is on fire tonight. Coming up to the end of round six. Tell us. Don't you know that? Don't you know it? When you go do it. Tell me that. Oh, oh, hey. oh, James Tillis, 27 years old, out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Record of 31 and 5, 24 by knockout. As we go to round number seven, Tillis out to meet up with Marvis Frazier. Frazier, 24 years old, from Philadelphia, 13 and 1, 8 by KO, that one loss. The first round knockout by Larry Holmes in Las Vegas back in 83. Nice left hook by Frazier. Frazier warming up every round, getting right on target. Hey, why don't you stretch out? What Tellus needs to do is get his uh, gun strapped on and go forward instead of going back and fighting occasionally. Houdini wants him to go forward, but he's not. He's just fighting his Tillis fight of going back and trying to finish it with one punch. Now that was a hard, hard uppercut. That's the kind that can end a fight. Let's get out. Nice and easy. Watch your head. Coming up later on, Larry Holmes defending his heavyweight championship against Carl The Truth Williams. Let's get up. Let's get up. Let's get up. Keep going. No knockdowns to this point. We have that one standing eight, which is an effect in this bout. That in the second round with uh, Tillis all over Frazier. Frazier has slowed down for the first time in about four rounds because I think that uppercut took a little starch out of him. He felt it all the way down to his heels. 
and it's taken him a little time to recover. He hasn't had to zip in the steam in his punches since then, but Tillis doesn't seem to suspect as much or detect it. Boy, that's pure Joe Frazier. He's even hollering like Joe Frazier did with each hook. And the referee, Jerry Curtis, taking a more active role these last few rounds. Usually likes to see the boxers fight their way out. Now he's keeping it very clean. He's keeping the brakes very, very crisp. But some of those brakes, the boxers have their hands free and they're still fighting. I'll take both brakes. Both these two punches. Punch in there. 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 Curtis got a little bit of that punch. He took it well. Final second, seventh round. We'll be back after these messages. Marv Albert with the Fight Doctor, Ferdy Pacheco with Dick Enberg. We're at the Lawler Event Center, Reno, Nevada, on the campus of the University of Nevada, Reno. Later on, Larry Holmes defending his heavyweight title against Carl the Truth Williams. This is round eight, scheduled for ten. Heavyweights Marvis Frazier in the maroon and James Tillis in the white. Keep going like that. Coming up later, Keep Reno's first heavyweight title fight in some 75 years or since Jack Johnson knocked out uh, James J. Jeffries. Ferdy, I'm told you like Jeffries in that one going in. I took the short price on that fight and it paid my way to the medical school. This fight is still within Tillis's reach at 67 to 66. It's a close fight because of the last round was even when uh, that big punch got Fraser off his attack and he has not been the same since. 67, 66, Frazier ahead unofficially, but Tillis not putting up the kind of fight that you have to, to win. Which has been his case Let's history. Get Let's get out of here. Come on. Stop holding, fellas. Stop holding, fellas, says Joey Curtis. The scoring is on the 10-point must system under the Nevada Athletic Commission. And will be handled by the three judges. Curtis does not take part in the scoring. Let's get out nice and easy. Cowboy. Why don't you ride Judges John McSweeney, Herb Santos, and Lillian Rungwood. All out of this area. Why don't you get busy, Cowboy, for your mama? Your mama, boy. All right, now uh, Boudini Brown saying this is for your mama. And that was for his mama right there. Two good jabs, uh, two good hooks by Fraser that exploded off the jaw of Quick Tillis. Two hands, Cowboy. Two hands. Again, Tillis connecting with an uppercut. And doing a borderline illegal thing. He's not putting a jab out there. He's trying to hold him off with an open glove, which gets the laces in the face. I'm surprised that Curtis has not pointed that out to him. Man, where your five hands Watch out of Listen, I want this to be closed. You understand? Close this glove. Let's go. And there was a warning for that fist to be closed. Joey really involved in this fight. Curtis is in every aspect of this fight. He's ensuring that this is an action fight. He won't let him tie up. He won't let him rest. Watch your heads. Watch your heads. Let's go. Frazier seems to have found that gas again. Ooh, perfect punch by Quick Tillis. Nice and easy. And that will do it for this eighth round. Back with back at the Lawler Event Center in Reno, Nevada. Capacity here in the area of 12,000. This is about half filled as you watch Carl the Truth Williams, who is watching Marvis Fraser and James Tillis on the undercard here in Reno. Carl the Truth getting set to go up against. Larry Holmes, that'll be later on. And we head to the ninth round. And what Carl the Truth has to draw conclusion here is never give it up. 
never give up. Just keep on fighting. That's what the Frasers have in their blood. That's what Marvis has. Not quite big enough to be a champion, but all the heart of a champion. What's at stake here? A good possibility for a title fight in either the WBC or the WBA. Tell us a man who lost the title fight to Mike Weaver. That was back in 81. Losing by decision in a WBA championship bout. Tellus has also been stopped by champions to be Pinklon Thomas and Greg Page. Tillis says he's in the process of making a, a new start. Something we've heard uh, many times in the boxing game. Can't blame him for trying. I'm going to warn you again. I want you to close that mitt. You understand? When you put that punch, I want you to close it. Next time I take a point away. Let's box. And again, Joey Curtis, very strong. Next time, I'll take a point away if you don't close that hand. He has been flagrant in disobeying Joey Curtis. Get the idea, but Dini Brown is getting a little exasperated with James Tillis. Yeah, his vocal power is down at least by 50%. Tillis not responding with the magic that Muhammad Ali could produce and respond to those striped tones. The main thing you, you've got to say, this has this fight has, has moved on the movement of Fraser forward relentlessly and the backward movement of Tillis, who just won't stand and fight. As he just did then, when I was saying that he's not doing it. You can't fight going backwards as fast as Tillis does. And less than a minute left in this ninth round. Nice and easy. Let's get Remember, up. break it up. Curtis has told him, you flick that out there open, and it's one point away from you. One point could decide this fight because it's still close. 77 to 75 right now. I have it unofficially. Marvis Frazier's favor. It was Tillis getting off in the early rounds. Back to Rock Frazier. Frazier given the standing eight back in the second round, but it has been Frazier, the aggressor from the third round on. Just when Tillis looks like he's about to get started with a good combination, he stops, and back comes Marvis with four or five punches, building up points. It's as if he's expecting to start Marvis with one good punch and win the fight, and he well could. And we'll stay right here between rounds and check out the corners of James Tillis and Marvis Frazier. You can hear the, the reaction from the crowd, a smattering of boos as uh, things have slowed down these last couple of rounds. This is the last round, you understand? Yeah, be careful. You gotta be careful. Stay close and get them off. Hand back. Hand back up. Hand back. Put your back, 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 put Tell me your the last one. Would you label that as yeah, confusion in the corner of Tillis? Organized confusion. Tillis not listening to anybody. <laughs> Tenth and final round. Instructions from Arvis Frazier. Well, be careful. Stay close to him. Keep punching. We need the round. Let's see if he can do what Pop wants. In the other corner, just fight with everything you've got. You're so far behind. You need to win with a big round. Well, Silla should be good and rested. He hadn't done much fighting for the past four or five rounds. He should get good, one good three-minute round together. But there he is, grabbing and holding on to Marvis Fraser. Marvis got to come in close and try not to pay the price coming in. Get out front! Get out front! Get out front! Come on! Goes Tillis bouncing back. His feet planted to try to land a good hard combination, but Marvis is taking the steam out of him. 
Oh, right hand that clipped Frazier. What could be going through Joe Frazier's mind as he sees his son on the verge of what appears to be a victory and knows he's got that weak chin. One punch could end it. He is so weary and so tired as Marvis Frazier because he has exerted all of the energy in this bout. And if he is able to hold on for the win, he would put it alongside the victory over James Broad as the uh, two significant W's in the career of Marvis Frazier. And you'll just have to say that Marvis is back. He has fought his way out from darkness because he was relegated to absolute obscurity after that shattering defeat at the hands of Holmes. In the meantime, in the ring, both men are trying to trade punches both where, and it's Tillis who's hanging on. And it's under a minute left in this 10th and final round. And when you say that Marvis Frazier is back, you have to take into consideration but it's change here. You have to take into consideration the fact after Larry Holmes, it is a very weak heavyweight picture. Yes, but that is exactly why he's right in consideration. Almost every day, a new hopeful goes down the drain, as James Broad did just the other day, as Jimmy Clark did a month ago, just when it looks like they're about ready to fight for the title. It's all over, but here, Marvis, I believe, has taken his fight. And coming up to the end of this final round, Tillis and Frazier exhausted. And that is it. We'll be back with the decision in just a moment. Nevada, Marv Albert, Bernie Pacheco, Dick Enberg, and we're set for the decision. Let's go to the ring. Here's Ed Daria. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision and a scoring by points as follows. Judge Lillian Running Wolf scores it 98-91. Judge Herb Santos observed the fight 97-91. And Judge John McSweeney saw the fight 96-92 for the winner, Marvis Frazier. A unanimous decision, Marvis Frazier extending the record to 14 and one by defeating James Tillis. So Marvis Frazier continuing the turn following the Lost to Larry Holmes back in November of 83. And as you saw during the course of the fight, there's so much activity that takes place in the corners of the boxes. We've traced the fight through the proceedings that took place in the corner. So here is a unique look back at the bout. Doing beautiful for Mama. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. How you feel? Mike, the one's ass. Yeah. All right. I know I'm waiting for that. You all right? Mm -hmm. See what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Ain't got nobody here to guard on you. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I want you out of there nice and easy. Two rounds. Stretching up. And I know. I'll stretch out. Don't fuck up. Don't keep your hands up. You all right? Yeah, well, all right, yeah. I got my hands up. Yeah, you can You keep going down. All right. Don't go down too low. No more than chest wide. All right. Where well, you can okay. see what the hell he's right. doing. Right. He's drunk. You can mug him now. You can mug him now. Look at you that. Three round cowboy. Oh, hey, 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 hey. Well, you go ahead. Come with the overhand right and fall down behind. All right. That's the overhand right. You gotta be there. Right. You gotta fall down behind the overhand right. Hands up. You trying to hit home run. Load the bases up first. Bat, 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 bat. Bat, 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 bat. Boxer. You a better boxer than he is. Oh. You ready to play? Go ahead, You ready to go? Hey. What the hell you waiting on? Hey. You ready to go? And act like it. Get some spirit about you. And fight like a child. This is our birthday. We ain't gonna have no miscarriage. Don't come up too far. You come back out. Right. Stay down on me. How am I doing there? All right, you want to fight? 
But you gotta stay down, stay down. All right. Don't get quit loading up. All right. Hey! Hey, stop! Get me! Yes! There you go. And what's the You understand? Put up the mother cuts. Get that spirit in you. You ain't no ordinary man. Don't fight like one. Atomic fire. Get mad. But be cool with your body. Hey, 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 What's wrong with you? We've been doing road work. <laughs> you ain't got no spirit. You win the fight, huh? You win the fight? Yeah. You just gotta be there. You can't uh, see. Look, you're all right. You win the fight. Just don't get killed. Kill it. You know that? All right, yes, sir. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Don't let it slip away from us. Ah. Uh, no. Don't go back to the old self. Stand there, man. Get that spirit. Stand there and get it. Think about your mama. Hey, hey. hey. Get that for your mama. Hey, hey. 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 I want that fist closed. I don't want that thumb out there. You understand? I ain't want. I want that. I want that fist there. That fist. Come on, fight right there, home. You act like a loser. You are one. Let me know you're a cowboy, man. Come on. Tell me you're a cowboy. It's the last one. Barbara Frazier and James Tillis from the point of view of their corner activity, and it was.